what causes solar flares. Solar flares, if large enough, eject plasma. Then they become coronal mass ejections. And people view them as a threat. I view them as a friend for the most part. But as in life, we find out that not all our friends are true friends. So every once in a while, an earth-facing ejection may come our way and we were the only channel to predict the largest solar flare in the history of cycle 24. What happens before you, uh, just to explain triggers, I want you to look at the center sunspots and the right hand side sunspot. They undergo disturbances at the same time the largest sunspot undergoes disturbances. And the limbs where the w solar wind is fastest usually be, are the ones that give up their filaments first. This recent detonation, and I use a detonation because it was a rapid, rapid explosion that was set up by smaller, smaller events. And you, you will see as time goes on, and if you watch this channel, the largest solar flares, the largest coronal ma mass ejections, start with minor disturbances. What is a solar flare? What is a coronal mass ejection? Well, NASA's really good at describing it, but not very good at explaining it. Here is a loop where the plasma is actually traveling in a clockwise fashion. And we say there's a brown dwarf right behind you. Um, between you and this computer screen, right behind you and so the direction of the electrons if you would take your th right thumb and point it at the screen would be then in the direction of this solar disk that you see in front of you but look at your curved fingers what direction are they turning that's clockwise so it looks like there's a directional flow to the electrons and the electrons are coming in from behind the earth and into the sun. This particular coronal mass ejection in front of you, um, you, you, you won't find it on most of the websites. You have to go deep to get the actual real-time coronal mass ejections, which is kind of frustrating. But I look at it as more of a detonation. The other thing on the chronograph, the black and white, real sensitive to uh, extreme ultraviolet and an x-rays, tremendous flashing in the corona but when you look at all three active regions though these are the bright spots they all undergo disturbances almost at the same time and when you zoom in you'll see the surface plasma near these active regions are under they move quite erratically and there's an acceleration into the motion of the surface plasma. Obvious disturbances are taking place. But, and we'll we'll get into it. We'll get into this, but this is a another one. Uh, M flare. Now remember NASA said 30 to 38 chance of M percent chance of M flare and we said 100 percent chance of M flare. Um, not M flare specifically, but flares. And but, you know, who cares about anything less than an M flare? They're just belches. But here I'll rock back and forth and look at the right hand side of the screen. You can see that right hand side of the screen undergoes changes. And if you look direct center, you'll see that this direct center sunspots all are responding to like, it looks like a wave. And when that wave hits, it hits almost the entire sun. Now, if that wave was coming from behind your back, let's say, right at the sun, and you being the earth, then the highest wind speeds will be on the limbs. And so any loop that starts to grow, any vortex that starts to elongate, will be lifting off those limbs. Meanwhile, the one direct facing at you is actually experiencing a compression. Why? Because the wind is coming directly down upon top of it. 
So as soon as that active region turns away, in another week, it will lift off and it will send off flares as well. There are other triggers too that we're going to point out. Collapsing of the loops is a trigger, sometimes to set off frequent stuff. And because of the relationship to other flares, we look at solar seismology as a real factor in triggering additional flares and multiple flares. Because you can't have a, a massive detonation like the one you've seen without there being a rippling effect um, like a seismic event on the sun. And in fact, solar seismology is in fact a field of study. So when a wave comes through the plasma, the surface plasma, and there's, there's loops that are spinning electrons and lighting up these loops with high energy and fission and fusion happening in the loops, um, it's easy for the entire loop to light up once you start creating a fission, re fission reaction. Just like a fuel rod, just like a fuse, the loops will all light up. And it's not simultaneously. The, the lighting up of those loops is in a fuse-like fashion. It's not like a light bulb. It's more like a fuse when these loops light up. And you will see as, as solar maximum starts to kick in, we will, we will get some excellent views of these loops and we'll be able to show you very in super slow motion how these loops, when they light up, um, they traverse, they progress rapidly though. And as in anything that has more energy, it will, the loops will expand with the more fusion and fission occurring in those loops. And, and as they get hotter, the bigger they expand. And that's why you see the loops start small, but then grow as the chain reaction progresses, just like the progression of the chain reaction of a fuel rod in a nuclear reactor. But this is about what's happening uh, when there is unprecedented destruction happening on earth and it coming from the climate demands your attention it, it it demands it it's required of you it's a social responsibility to pay attention to climate not to pick sides but to do your own critical thinking ask yourself what can kill the oceans the plants and the mammals on land and the birds on land as well as life underneath the water what can kill all of that? And th there's really very few answers, but radiation is the most logical explanation. What kind of radiation? Then you have to start digging. And both kinds of radiation are appear, appear to be relevant factors in what's happening on planet Earth. So w when you see trees that are dying and that they're only south facing or southwest facing or southeast facing trees are dying while their north facing uh, side of the tree is not dying. When that is happening all over the globe, it's a real strong indicator that the sun is killing your tree. And there is aluminum oxides, I, I submit, they are bad for you. High alkaline soils are bad for the forest. They make the trees sick. They make the trees not grow fast. They, they pick on the younger trees sometimes, the uh, highly alkaline soils. It's hard on the insects. It's hard on the fauna. And it needs, chemtrails need to be substituted for something that's healthier. Maybe more expensive, but something healthier than aluminum oxide. But aluminum oxide doesn't pick on hill slopes, south facing hill slopes, where most of our tree deaths are occurring. Um, and south facing sides of the tree when the half, half trees are dying. So that's not aluminum oxide. And aluminum oxide also is a fire accelerant. How bad? Uh, light a match. That's, that's pretty much 
what aluminum oxide is. And so, so when we enter this era of another solar maximum, and we see unprecedented carnage on Earth and the freakiest weather we've ever seen when we're undergoing social and political stressors like we've never seen before. The time to be informed is now and it's almost too late to get informed. So stay tuned. we got a lot of important stuff coming down. And remember, everybody on Patreon sees these videos before the rest of the world. They, they, they get the premieres, they get the previews before anybody else gets a premiere or a preview. And they, they're the, my family. They've kept me here. They've kept my research going. And therefore, I need to reward them and let them have first crack of everything, everything that breaks. And the, the weather, though, is we, 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 have, we cycle that quickly because one or two days makes a huge difference and it makes no sense to make a weather video go public that's a week old it just doesn't benefit anybody and it's and you know it takes time to post these things and get them up and moderate so so again uh, we should all recognize the s sacrifice and the selflessness and the unselfishness uh, of the Patreon subscribers because without them there would be no YouTube channel. Until next time be prepared, not scared.